Ladies and gentlemen, we were not expecting to make any more commentaries than the one we were planning for Luchador Spotlight tonight, but a situation comes up like this with Seth Rollins' injury, and I felt like John and I had to talk about this because really, John is the biggest Seth Rollins fan I know, and both of us are flabbergasted at how much talent the WWE is without right now due to injury. So John... If you have any kind of like an opening statement that you want to make regarding this situation, I would love to hear it right now. I, uh, you know, I'm still floored by this, guys, because I've been away from the computer pretty much all day. I got notification about all this uh, from texts from uh, Ashton, you know, my cohort and commentary here. And just in all of this happening, I've been trying to reconcile all of it in my brain, trying to come up with something, you know, to me. This injury, I, I think more than any other that's, you know, gone on so far this year really exemplifies the problem, I think, of the current WWE model, the oversaturation of live events and shows and content and everything else. Yep. And because of that model, our WWE champion, whether you're a fan of Seth Rollins or not, I think is a moot point. I think the more general point here is he is the world champion. He is carrying this company on his back in the main storylines. Is now out for six to eight months. So like Randy Orton, more than likely, Seth Rollins is going to miss WrestleMania 32 this year. And even if you just want to look at the person, that's a huge payday to miss out on. And my heart just breaks for Seth Rollins and you know, the people that he may, you know, be providing for, because that that's just a hit hit in your bank account there. Um, as far as the WWE product goes, I, I mean, you and I were just going over before recording the huge upheaval they're in now, rewriting storylines and everything else. And, and I'm telling you, dude, like, I think my anger, honestly, is less about the fact that Seth is injured, because I'm more just upset about that and sad. I think where I'm angry is, again, like, I feel like, Stuff like this shouldn't even be happening, or it shouldn't happen at such crucial points if it wasn't for the model that we're currently under. Like, you know you're getting ready for WrestleMania season. Why do you have guys like your WWE Champion doing live events against people like Kane in situations like this? Like, I don't know. It just it just really saddens yeah. me and it frustrates me, dude. And, and uh, uh, as far as the actual injury goes, uh, Jonathan Coachman reported on it earlier today. I think it was about an hour ago. Um, it's a torn ACL, a torn MCL, and a torn meniscus, all in the same knee. And it happened while he was trying to powerbomb Kane through a table. Uh, it was during a, a – I don't even know for sure if it was a main event. Knowing that Cena and Lesnar are both on hiatus, um, it probably was the main event. But it was at, at a house show. It was at a freaking uh, – a live event, I guess is what they call them now. And, yeah, it's tragic. And, like, it, it's funny, Ashley, because I didn't expect to become this angry when you and I were recording. I expected to be more deflated, more down. But, you know, we, we also read, because, I mean, let's, let's just get into the meat and potatoes of it, shall we? We know that they're doing a lot of television rewrites and that the game plan right now, but that could change very quickly because this seems like a very erratic, very volatile situation. I think you would agree with me on that. But the plan right now is a tournament at Survivor Series to crown the new champion. The championship has been vacated. There is no champion right now. Uh, and they're thinking, I don't want to say that they're doing it, but they're thinking about, you know, bringing John Cena and Brock Lesnar back earlier than scheduled. And then, now, again, this is another problem I have. I was actually happy that John Cena was going to step out for a little bit. Yeah. God knows the guy's been going constant for 10 years, more or less, and, you know, not getting that time to rest when he himself has accrued injuries. Brock Lesnar, to me... I don't think it's going to diminish his value as an attraction to do Survivor Series, even though he just got done doing Hell in a Cell, so I have less of a qualm about that. But my thing is, this is another problem. Not only the WWE model of oversaturation and so many shows and live events a year where these guys, like, they can only go at such a rate before they start breaking down, but the idea that you haven't built other guys up, that you need these marquee names because you realize that a tournament that could consist of, say, just Cesaros or Mrs. or people of that nature... It doesn't give you that air of credibility when it's revolving around the WWE title. And that's your fault, not the performers. I know we all like to give Cena flack and even Lesnar flack at times to people like, oh, I want a consistent WWE champion. I'll be honest with you, with the exception of maybe a few guys, you know, Roman Reigns, maybe Dean Ambrose with the right push, not many guys I can buy with that world title, especially when you consider the people that they'd have to work off of. 
And that's because there really aren't any legitimate stars. And that's, I think, another thing, too, with Seth out. That's another legitimate guy gone. And now they're just scrambling, being like, I don't know, are they going to put the title on Reigns? Are they going to put it back on Cena in some kind of a swerve? It's just, it's really depressing to think about WWE's options here, dude. I mean, what do you think about the whole thing? You've been hearing me rant my head off here. I mean, what do you think? You're always the more rational between the two of us. So well, no, I mean, uh, to me, the whole situation is really unfortunate, but I think that the, it's made worse when you take everything else into context. When you know that Undertaker, Randy Orton, John Cena, and Brock Lesnar are all on some kind of hiatus where they're not going to be around for at least another month. And then you also have to look at the fact that they've been putting all of their eggs into the Reigns basket. And now knowing that Rollins can't possibly just retain the title, which is what I'm sure most people were hoping for, everybody that I've seen is saying Reigns is winning and that's it. And that's just, it's over. Reigns is the new champion. They might as well just hand it to him and not even bother with the tournament. I think that's definitely most likely. The, the two scenarios that I've seen getting thrown around are Roman wins the tournament and then Sheamus cashes in, which I don't think is going to happen. I know a lot of people think it will, but I don't see it happening. Uh, and then the other one is Reigns versus Ambrose, and one of them turns heel. And see, it's funny you say that, Ash, because to, to me, going within the tournament structure and getting some coherence, at least on my side of things, I could see three like end results. We have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns in the finals. Personally, I would have Brock Lesnar go over. And I say that not because I'm not ready for Reigns to be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Hell, I was one of the first people that said, and you know this, I'm ready for the Roman Reigns title reign anytime. Because I feel like he's, he's put in the time. I'm ready for it. Everybody else, quite honestly, should be ready for it, too. I just think with all these injuries like piling up... I can only think of so many people Reigns could work with, so I'd rather have a WWE champion that wouldn't even appear constantly so you can kind of hide that problem yeah. while it kind of sorts itself out. Um, so Lesnar would go over. Uh, to your point, Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose, and maybe you just have Roman going over and uh, and maybe Dean turns heel after the fact. Or what I would like, because I think it could lead to some interesting uh, things, you do Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose, but in the course of the match, Dean realizes he is losing, and he's got a golden opportunity here, and he turns, and he sacrifices the friendship in the name of being world champion, and I think that would be a great story to tell, so you have Dean win this tournament. So, I don't know. If Roman Reigns wins, you're not going to hear me complain about it, because I've, I've been ready for Roman Reigns to be world champion, I, I'd say, for at least the past, like, two to three months. I feel like he's been putting on quality matches, he's been getting a nice connection with the crowd, I think he's ready. That's just one opinion among many. But if you're not going to do that, honestly, with the injuries piling up, I'd say put the title on Lesnar. I mean, he was the last really legitimate champion. He got the title stolen from him in that kayfabe sense. You put it back on him. He doesn't appear at every show, so you don't have to worry about, well, who's he going to work with while well, these guys are off and recovering. And honestly, too, I think about how are you going to reintroduce Seth into the fold? Because honestly, and this is what I'm thinking, too, maybe they can use the fact that Seth was injured as a catalyst for kind of a baby face turn because yeah. remember, Oh, I have no doubt in my mind that when Seth does return, which I'm guessing will probably be closer to SummerSlam next year, it'll be as a baby face. I, I guarantee you Ashton, if not this coming somewhere down the line, somewhere down the line, something is going to happen where the authority, you know, they, they, they make little of Rollins. They belittle his injury. Like they did with Daniel Bryan. They said Daniel Bryan couldn't handle the stress of being a man, uh, the man and the champion because he got injured. They'll do the same thing with Seth. I could picture Triple H coming out and being like, you know, I groomed Seth and I saw the future in him, which is why it's such a shame. He couldn't handle the pressure and just thinking like, well, because you got injured, clearly you're not ready. You're not capable of being the man. And it'll be that narrative. And then Seth comes back huge pop, maybe spits in Triple H's face, you know, metaphorically speaking, and they do a program, which I think a lot of people envision for Seth uh, for 2016. Anyway, it's just going to be under different circumstances than we originally envisioned. I uh, think that there are, there are some real possibilities with this tournament. I think that it's most likely, the most likely outcome is Reigns wins, and that's yeah. just it. That's, that's the obvious look, but you and I don't like to settle on obvious, do we? No, never. What if they bring Brian back? That is another. He has been itching to come back, and this what if, would be an excellent. What if this situation and these circumstances make the WWE's doctor just a little bit more lenient on whether he can pass guys to be physically able to wrestle or not? And you know what? That's a great point because you said it earlier. 
Orton injured. He, you know, taken out the garbage, re-injured that shoulder. He's had so- shoulder problems for years. Again, I can't even make light of that. I actually feel bad for the guy. Yeah. Rollins is out now. Cena, I feel bad for him. He's probably going to have to come back early now, get called well, into it again. That's the thing, though. It doesn't I, I feel like Cena is contractually obligated to do something that won't allow him to be at Survivor Series. You know what? Because isn't he shooting that reality show? Isn't that why he took time off in the first I, place? It's something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess he's still out. Uh, you know, which honestly, all the better. You know what I'm hoping for for this tournament? And again, I do love your idea of like a Brian reintroduction because everybody else has fallen like flies. Please, WWE, use this tournament to elevate some guys. I'm not saying have Reigns lose. Again, if he's going to win, so be it. I mean, I've already accepted that fate. But use it to really elevate Cesaro and acknowledge, like, yes, he's making this connection. Have him do well. Have Ziggler do well. I, Rusev's injured, too. He can't be in the tournament, I don't think. Damn it, man. Everybody. Oh, my God. And that's the thing, Ash, and I'm going to be honest. I think my problem is my only qualm with Reigns winning has nothing to do with Reigns. What heels can he feud with? Because, like, I, I feel like they've all been exhausted. I mean, I don't want him to go back to Bray Wyatt already. You know, I guess they could pick up that business over the world title. Maybe Dean could turn. But with Rusev gone and, and just everything, and Seth being injured, like, I don't know. There aren't really that many heat magnets. Kevin Owens has the IC title, so I don't know. Maybe you'd have to find a way to get him up there. Just a really bad situation, man. I don't know. Yeah. I I think man, I, Cena is... Here, I'm seeing it right here. Cena is contractually obligated to host some kind of fitness show. Okay. Um, I, I guess Vince could buy out that contract. I don't know. But, man, to me, the, the biggest problem here, and it's, again, we talked about this during our last very topical commentary, and it was our first one, too, talking about why would you want to only have a limited number of top stars knowing now that situations like this happen and you have nobody to back them up. You know, I, I hate to say it, but if you can't get like Brock or any of those names that could really be the heel in the sense of like they're merciless and they're just beating the crap out of everybody. uh, To me, I guess the heel that Reigns could play off of in the finals is Ambrose. And again, like we both said, he could turn in the course of the match. That's how Ambrose would arrive at it. Why again though, my, (laughs) See, and this is me being stubborn and reali- not realizing emotionally that there is a 0% chance WWE actually does this, even though it would be the smartest thing for them to do. Reigns should be the one to turn heel. Uh, and you know what? I, I have to agree with you. I tell, like, can, like, we, why- can we just acknowledge that this is Survivor Series 1998 all over again? 1998. Wasn't that the year of the Montreal Screwjob, just so I'm keeping my dates straight? No, that was 97. What was 98. The Rock joined the corporation. Oh, The Rock joined the corporation. Okay, okay. So you're thinking Roman Reigns joins the authority then? Because he's. I'm, I'm like, not thinking it's going to happen, but I'm saying it should. I'm saying it that should. that to me. I mean, you're already doing enough comparing of him to The Rock. Why not just go all the way with it and repeat The Rock's moment? And you know what? It would, in a kayfabe sense, it would be smart because look at at the victories that Roman Reigns has racked up recently and the role he's been on. Like, why wouldn't the authority want to, you know, hitch Roman Reigns, you know, to that wagon and just ride it all the way? I agree with you. That would be a great moment. To me, dude, and it kills me for saying it, and if anybody wants to shoot me, please, I give them full permission. But honestly, maybe the best course of action, too, so you can you can keep the certain prestige of things, if you really want a great scumbag heel and preserve some things, maybe you do Roman Reigns versus Del Rio in the finals and you have Reigns go over. I mean, they've really built up the U.S. title as, like, this secondary thing. Maybe that would be a good finals in the tournament. You know, to have I was too. even thinking I they know. could do – I was even thinking they could do Reigns Del Rio earlier on in the tournament, not necessarily in the right. finals. Because to me, like, I think Reigns is going to just run through a gauntlet of heels at this point. I think yes. that we're going to do – like, the first round match is probably going to be Reigns versus, like, Wade Barrett or something like that. And then, like, if they do – if they do um, a bigger tournament, like not necessarily like an eight man, maybe like a 16 man rather than just a simple eight man tournament. And they have more than three rounds. They could do Reigns has to get through like Barrett and Del Rio and like uh, maybe I don't know who else. Sheamus, I think maybe Seamus, maybe I think honestly, 
if they're not going to do Reigns Ambrose with Reigns turning heel, I could see the finals being Reigns Wyatt and just finishing off that feud. I I have to agree with you too. That was my other thing. You either do Del Rio, why it's another possibility. But the weird thing is, and like that's another reason why it's so tragic that sets out. Survivor Series has really become. It used to be Randy Orton's pay per view in his younger years when he was yeah. like the sole survivor and everything. It's yeah. become the Shield's pay per view now. Right. Yeah. So I think it would be incredibly appropriate to have Reigns and Ambrose in the finals and some kind of turn. Because here's the thing, WWE to me. Even though I think they have a great baby face in Dean Ambrose when they do something with him and they take an active interest in him, clearly that active interest is in Roman Reigns. So if it's going to be in Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose is just oozing talent waiting to be used. I don't even know if he's really been happy with anything he's done so far, like like he laid it with anything he's done so far, save for the shield of his WWE run, you know, specifically as a singles guy. Do the turn! You know, do it like because because the story of Roman Reigns is he always comes close and he always should have that moment, but for whatever reason it gets stolen out from under him. And if we don't think it's going to be a cash in, which I'm with you, I don't think Sheamus is cashing in at Survivor Series. No, I'm yeah. telling you right now, Sheamus. I I said this to start, and I've been staying true to it the entire time. Sheamus is not cashing in until either at or after WrestleMania 32. Right. I am sticking with that because. Again, I think the whole reason they gave him the money in the bank is so that it can give him a reason to stay relevant while they just kind of screw around with him. And that gives them an excuse to push him then when it's getting close to the TMNT2 press tour. Right, right. So, you know, I, I'm with you there. I can agree with those sentiments. So to me, why not have Reigns get robbed? Yet again, and again, by a very, you know, uh, dear friend, a guy that he called a brother, you again, know. Again, though, why does Ambrose have to turn when he is the most naturally over babyface on your roster right now? Because they don't care for him to be that most naturally over babyface. But he is. I mean, I, that's the I thing. agree I with understand, you. But... I understand that Vince might not necessarily like the idea of Ambrose being the top babyface, but if he has picked up anything from Triple H... He should realize that whether it's something that he wants to happen or not, if the crowd is responding to it and it's a consistent response, you need to just throw your hands in there and say, fine, you want it, you can have it. And you got to understand, there's no contention between us here. I agree with you, but you're saying that of a man that you once told me said, I'd rather have an arena just you know cut in half as long as it had people who accepted my way of things. I'd rather lose money if the audience that I did have agreed with my point of view. So while I agree with you, Ambrose is a great baby face, and it's a shame to me that I don't think they see that when Orton's out and Cena's got this contractual obligation that Ambrose can hold down the fort while Reigns getting sick and tired of, of almost feeling like he's going to taste the carrot and he consistently gets the stick, you know, turns heel. I think that'd be a great story. I just don't think it's the story that WWE is interested in telling. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I wish you know. I wish that I could be like, no, John, you don't understand. They're going to do it the right way. But I can't. And at the end of the day, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is for your finals to be Reigns, Ambrose. Triple H comes out, and maybe he's at ringside, and he helps Reigns win. Handshake, Reigns is the new golden boy. That would be perfect. That would be amazing. And that that, that puts Ambrose that positions Ambrose as your top baby face. He can chase Reigns for months if it has to be. They could build up to a WrestleMania match with that feud starting now, five months out, because there's so much gas left in that tank. And yet, no, they're just going to hand the title to Reigns and say, "Here, Roman, sink or swim." And he's going to sink because, I mean, first of all, there are people th saying, "Oh, we're going to get." Uh, a semifinals match of Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. He is going to get booed out of the building if he beats Cesaro in this tournament. And honestly, unless he does turn heel, I don't think Ambrose turning heel would be enough to make the fans not boo Roman Reigns for winning over him. And I just got to be honest too about something on my mind. Uh, and I know this may seem unrelated, but I would actually prefer Roman Reigns turn heel because here's the thing. If he continues on this babyface route, I don't want him to win the Royal Rumble again. Like I'm, I've already kind of got that feeling in the pit of my stomach that Roman Reigns. I would rather Reigns be the champion going into the Royal Rumble. Yes. Than have him win the Royal Rumble again. 
dude, you and I are on the exact same page. Either put him in a title match separate from the Rumble match yeah. or make him the champion because I – Honestly, and it's nothing against Reigns. I just I love the Royal Rumble, and I and I normally don't really care for repeats. If I'm being honest, it could be anybody. I just don't really care for repeats, so I'd rather not go down that route again. But I have a feeling in my stomach that we will. Yep. I don't know, dude. I love your thought process because again, if I'm Roman Reigns, it even makes sense too. How many times has this guy got uh, gotten close only to get screwed? So clearly, Reigns would have to say to himself at some point, something ain't working. I gotta change something because this isn't working. And then you know he aligns obviously with the authority, which I think would give them some much needed juice. Because I'll be honest, as much as I loved Rollins, I've been over the authority storyline for a good while now. And maybe Roman Reigns could be that that breath of life that it needs. Another name that I've seen thrown around is I mean he's the Intercontinental Champion already. We were talking about it in the summer when he first showed up. It makes sense that he would have kind of usurped. Rollins as the golden boy what if the authority just picks Kevin Owens as their new golden boy I wouldn't mind that at all Kevin Owens to me when when he's got something to work with much like Dean Ambrose is one of the best there is in the company right now and you know what John I could even see because again I think Reigns is going to run up against a gauntlet of heels I could see Owens making it to the finals and Reigns beating him despite authority interference they've had interactions lately Yes. Wouldn't surprise me either. Yep. You know, they, they've had their interactions lately. And you, and you know what would be great, like, with Kevin Owens, if you really want to spice up the tournament, for these guys that are mid-card champions, do kind of a PWG thing with what they do with their tag title tournament. Have the mid-card title defended in their tournament matches, and then in the finals, maybe, I don't know, do some kind of a unification. Because, I mean, we were hearing rumors that it was going to be, oh, at least I was, Owens and Ambrose at Survivor Series for the IC title. You know, you I could was take care of that business. and Owens, then have to... I thought it was going to be Owens. No, I guess Reigns was the world title. Yeah, yeah, so that does make sense. Owens, Ambrose, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, remember... I mean, if they – I honestly, I think that's going to be one of the semifinal matches. I think it'll be that and then probably Reigns-Wyatt as the other one, and then the winners of those matches will face each other for the title. Right. And I think it'll definitely be Reigns over Wyatt, but then – the question becomes, will they do the Ambrose Reigns thing and have one of them turn, or will they just stick to Reigns beating a gauntlet of heels to win the title and just have Owens beat Ambrose? You know what? I'm, I'm going to cut through all the conjecture right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put forth what I think is going to happen right now. Because I'm telling you, Survivor Series, I think in the last few years, has become the Shields pay-per-view. I, I've got to go with Roman Reigns and Ambrose making up the final. I, I just don't think anything else is appropriate given where we are. Um, either that or, or maybe, and this is out there, but the whole survivor series concept has been 25 years of undertaker. Maybe they do a sentimental story of him going for one last run and it's him and reigns. Can I, don't I, know. can I just ask you a question? Sure. Why do you think that survivor series is the shields pay-per-view? They debuted there. You know, uh, ro- uh, God, what what else happened there? Uh, they had the, the only big... other thing I can think of was Reigns going like I think it was like three on one in 2013 to win. But I mean, last year the Shield did nothing. Well, wasn't Seth? No, Seth wasn't champion of Survivor Series last year, was he? Yeah, you know, he no. was champion, but he was in a five on five match and he lost it. Yeah, he was no, and he what he. No, he wasn't even champion. Then he still had money in the bank. But yeah, he did the five on five. That's right. Yeah. And then and then Reigns, I think Reigns was still out. That's right. And then Ambrose yeah, lost to Wyatt. But yeah, I mean, Seth still made events. So I guess in that sense, like one of the show members did something big. I don't know. It's just like every year, one of them always seems to do something bigger. All three Last of them Last year's do. Survivor Series was more about Sting than anything. Yeah. But, I mean, still, I'm convinced Reigns, Ambrose, or, again, that thought that just popped into my head, 25 years of Undertaker, they may try and go a sentimental route, really establish Reigns that way. I highly doubt it. What do you mean? That's another idea on the table. Well, no, because 25 years of Undertaker has been one of the selling points for this Survivor Series. Maybe he's an entrant in this tournament rather than him doing anything with Bray Wyatt, and either he gets eliminated by Bray or, by some stroke of luck, he makes it to the finals. He stands off against Reigns. Reigns beats Taker, becomes a WWE champion. So oh, I don't know. Wow, that's one hell of a rub, isn't it? Yeah, I, and and why not? I mean, th- and you know, honestly, I think commentary could really sell it. You know, if they actually cared about selling it, it's like, oh, 25 years made his debut at the Survivor Series, and now here he could be going for one last, you know, golden run, being world champion one more time, and 
you know, this hungry up and comer in Reigns. It's a perfect contrast. I think you can tell a great story with it. But yeah, being realistic and being grounded, I say Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose in the finals. So. Wow. All right. I, see, I, I think my whole thing is not necessarily uh, let's figure out who's going to be WWE champion. I know we've talked about that quite a bit now, but my thing is Rollins is out. Who's going to step up? Who is going to step up to fill that void? Because right now, Unfortunately, and I hate that I'm even saying this, but unfortunately, based on the investment, based on the build, based on the recent big wins, you almost have to think it's going to be Del Rio. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think Del Rio might be getting a really big push in the coming months, people. I, I, I really do, because – and honestly – and and I and I would hate to do this to the championship, but I mean it's it's withstood far worse. I would almost have Kevin Owens just either drop the IC title and focus solely on the world title picture and push him as a monster heel, or just take why, that title along for the ride. Well, yeah, you know, I was and, gonna say, uh, yeah, that's a that's a better idea. I don't understand why he would drop the title first. I just you know I think Kevin Owens should be the guy. But I don't think he will be because I think Del Rio, at least in WWE's eyes, has a greater appeal. Obviously, I don't agree with it. If anybody's listened to our commentaries recently, I, again, I think that should go to Kevin Owens. But yeah, I think Del Rio is going to be the one to get the big rub. They'll probably be like, hey, you work with, uh, you know, whoever the champion is for the next few months or however long. And yeah, it just really, really stinks. You know, it's but, funny, though, because if you kind of just kind of take a step back and try and get some perspective, it feels like they're shoehorning reins in to fill Cena's role while Cena's out. It almost felt more like Del Rio was getting put in that Orton role where he's kind of working the upper mid card, getting big wins over guys that he needs to win against. And then that using that momentum to kind of build up younger guys. Right. I don't know. I, my thing is if Del Rio is in the Orton spot, if he gets pulled up to the Rollins spot, then who fills the Orton spot? And it would almost have to be Owens, right? You'd think, right? But then what about on the babyface side? I don't know. I don't know. And see, that's the problem. That's the problem. And and it's so funny because I feel like me and Anthony were talking about this like two days ago. When you have a core group of guys that you focus on and you kind of leave everybody else to kind of fend for themselves or whatever, these are the kinds of problems you run into because that core group of guys – has really come undone. Well, and, and we talked really about that diminished. during our, our our other our topical video talking about WWE's inability to make stars. It was right. not necessarily that they weren't trying, even though in some instances they did and failed. It was mostly that they just weren't trying. They just weren't interested in making more than one star at a time. And right. I think that this is a perfect example of why that's a terrible idea. Exactly. Exactly. Because like, I'm just so frustrated right now of, because yeah, you can crown a new champion, but there are still so many other problems to be addressed that I don't know. It, it's going to be a rough few months. Honestly, I think Rollins, with, yeah. Rollins was running a marathon and he was on the tail end of the marathon and he tripped over his own feet and dropped the title in the dirt. And now the WWE needs somebody to find the title, pick it up, clean it off and then finish the marathon with it. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous to me. I mean, I look, I know injuries are bound to happen in the pro wrestling industry. Well, it, and that's unavoidable. exactly why it makes no sense that the WWE would focus so much of their attention on three or four guys, because those guys, whether they're amazing performers and make you shit tons of money or not, they're still human and they still have an injury risk. Exactly. And we're seeing I, that now. I think, I think when you have a model that's, core group of guys plus multitude of just shows and events and content, equ it just equals disaster. You've either got to build up more guys or you've got to scale back on your shows. And personally, I would do both because I think that's the best model. But WWE is showing no signs of either. And now in a predicament like this, you've got those poor writers rewriting everything. Can you imagine that room right now no. with how Vince is I don't even want else? to. I don't even want oh, to. My. Oh my God, dude, if that doesn't give you like some kind of complex or a drinking problem when it's over, you're a better man than me because I, I would be looking at my career prospects and just thinking, I don't want to be here because that has got to be hell right now for those guys. Do you know I, what the final four was in that 1998 Survivor Series tournament? Uh, who was the final four? Mankind, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and The Undertaker. Amazing. 
Like, that, that's about as legitimate a Final Four as you can get, you know? I just, I'm sorry. Like, I love guys like Cesaro and, Ant like, I, I love those guys, but the way they're built and the way they're treated, I'll be honest, like, would I be happy to see them with the world title or in a program for the world title? Certainly. Could I put much stock in it? I think that's another matter entirely. I wish that WWE had more interest in a lot of their guys because now you have a tournament. Like, how are we going to beef this up? How are we going to make this tournament seem credible? And then what are we going to do in the aftermath? Like, whoever the champion is, who the hell are they going to work with on either side? Because if you have a heel win it, to me, there aren't that many believable baby faces. And if you're going to have a baby face win it, I think the same problem is true. You don't really have that many believable heels. Uh, which is why it makes the most sense to take a baby face and turn them heel so that whoever they turn against, that's their first program that buys you time to build up somebody else. Completely agree. Completely. Agree. Either that, or again, as I've been saying, you know, pull the emergency switch. If you have to get the belt back on Lesnar and you buy yourself time that way, I would prefer your option, Ashton. Yeah. And you know what? You I like, I, I like the Lesnar idea. I do, but I don't think that he's even available to use right now they it would almost i think it might even be a breach of contract if they tried to use him more than the allotted number of dates right oh man i dude i don't even know yeah it's it's a really rough situation for the wwe and i think the the silver lining here is that somebody or if not multiple people need to step up their game. People are going to get opportunities that they wouldn't have necessarily gotten otherwise. And this is really, I think an opportunity that'll present itself to WWE to really kind of test their metal. You have spent the last decade focusing completely on a very small core group of guys. And you've never really had to deal with pretty much all of them being hurt at the same time before, or at least out in some way. Uh, and now that's happening. How are you going to handle it? And and they better find a way because, you know, something, something's got to change. I mean, again, I, I hate to keep going back to this example, but you look at a guy like Cesaro. Cesaro had a few TV matches with Cena over the U.S. championship, getting really over. People were really looking at him with fresh eyes, renewed interest. And now all this time later, you know what the rumored match he was supposed to be a part of at Survivor Series was? Who? Him versus, him versus Stardust. Like... That's what I'm talking about. They don't capitalize when people have momentum. Kevin Owens, I think, is in that kind of sweet spot. I don't want to take the piss out of him too much. And I think if you flip the switch tomorrow, he could be the top heel and run the place. But you've got to have that interest. You've got to have that sense of continuity. Like, let's write this guy consistently. Let's build on the push. They don't do it. I mean, and, and that's the thing. The guys can only do so much. They can go out and connect with the crowd and work on their promos and work on their moveset. And they should. You know, th that's that half, but that creative engine that, you know, Titans tower as, as they call it, it's got to do its job too. And it's got to recognize, as you've said, triple H has said on NXT, I may have a disconnect with what a certain crowd likes. It doesn't mean I'm not going to give it to them. Vince needs to come to that same realization because stuff like this is horrible, horrible for a company. As I was walking back after you texted me, I'm just thinking to myself, what happens to WrestleMania too? Because you're talking like these big guys have missed WrestleMania. And it's well, 30... I mean, by WrestleMania, we'll at least have Cena, Taker, and Brock to work with. And obviously, Triple H will probably work a match, too. That's true. So I guess I guess you can soften the blow there. Not to but mention like, yeah. they're probably going to bring in The Rock to work a match. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and see, though, like you mentioned all those names, and I feel like the bulk of those names were part-time guys or guys that like have that credibility that they need. How all long... of them but Cena, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, even Cena to a degree, like he's, he's been the workhorse for over a decade. Like how long are you going to suck on this teat WWE? Seriously? It's, it's really ridiculous, dude. I'm, I'm, yeah. And you know what? I, I even saw an article and I, I wish I could remember what it was. I, I wish I could have actually saved it, but you know, people were saying that's another thing, you know, the, uh, the, um, the television programming being seasonal, that Lucha Underground did right because you get these breathers. Even if you do have to rely on these part-time guys and these guys of higher status that have been that way for several years. Yeah, I mean, with Brock, a it's a lot easier to cram 15 appearances into a nine-month period than 12. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it uh, just the whole model to me. If this 
tragedy today and, and all of the fallout, the fervent rewriting, the scrambling and everything doesn't show you that the model that you're using right now doesn't work, then I give up because, you know, that there's we can talk all day, but until they change something with the infrastructure, it's all going to be a moot point. So I'm excited for this tournament at Survivor Series. I'm feeling terrible for Rollins right now and the payday he's going to miss out on probably a WrestleMania. And even all the paydays before that, because I don't know what the arrangement's going to be. I feel terrible for the writers that they've got to do all this work. And I still have just a, a seething, seething hatred right now for Vince McMahon and all those that prop up this model of let's rely on this core group of guys and let's saturate everybody with all these shows. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's really bad. The situation is terrible. Uh, it is worth noting that in 1998, the entire tournament happened on the Survivor Series card. Right. Yeah, that Literally, makes sense. Literally, six first-round matches, three quarterfinal matches, two semifinal matches, and, of course, the finals. Um, so it was it was a huge tournament, and the whole thing happened on the Survivor Series show. And now the WWE, if they really wanted to, they could just say, well, well, screw it. Let's make it a four-hour show since it's one of the big four. We did it with SummerSlam. We need a little more time for this tournament to happen. Uh, let's just go for it. And they can because it's the network. Exactly. Exactly. You know, honestly, I don't know if you want to beef up the tournament. This is a prospect we haven't considered either. Do you have some guys for one night only from NXT or the tournament? Yes. I was even thinking you could – I mean, at the very least, I think your NXT champion deserves a spot in the tournament, Finn. Right. Um, I, I was hoping that Sammy and maybe even Hideo would be healthy by now, but I don't think either one of them are ready to go yet, sadly. Um, maybe we get Samoa Joe. I doubt that, but it's possible. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you bring in all these guys that have legitimate television experience, your Samoa Joes, your Rhinos, your James Storm, and they're on NXT, but I feel like these guys are like break glass in case of emergency, they know how to work a crowd in front of a pay-per-view. They've worked pay-per-views before. Let's just put them in a first-round match and have them lose. Right. And, I mean, even if you want to have some of, some of, if not all of, your first-round matches on the pre-show. Yeah, that could, could work, too. I mean, if you want to do an eight-man tournament, you could have four first-round matches in the, the kickoff show. And then you would have your two semifinals at the beginning of the show and your finals at the end of the show, and you'd be fine. I mean, to me, if WWE really wants to give off the appearance that nothing's wrong, even though we all know otherwise, I think you go big here and you pull out any gun that you conceivably can. 16-man so tournament. I say, yes, yeah, 16-man tournament, and you get at least two or three NXT guys there. And I would even have, like, one or two of them if, if you are going to go three – <laughs> advance for a little bit. I'm not saying make up your finals or even your semifinals, but you know, yeah, I maybe, would say you know? maybe maybe do like Finn, Joe, and James Storm. Have Finn win his first round match. Joe and Storm both lose. Okay, yeah, I can and get then have that. Finn lose in the quarterfinals. Yeah, hell, Finn, if, if, dude, Finn can lose to Bray Wyatt for all I care. That entrance alone for those matches would be incredible. And hell, I mean, I don't know how they could really, like, tie this all up, because I, I know the magic of editing everything. They, they give the appearance of a kind of continuity, but even if you have Finn win his first match, and then maybe the second match, Joe does a run-in, kind of distracts him on the apron or something, and yeah. costs Finn Bauer the second yeah. match. So you, you keep feeding the NXT storyline. I really it's do win -win. feel like NXT is here not just to create stars for the long term, but also as a break glass in case of emergency situation when shit like this happens. You exactly. lost four of your top stars for the next two months. Let's borrow some people from NXT, put them on raw for a couple months, and then we can either see if what they're doing is working. And if it is, then keep them around and make money with them. Or if it's not working, send them back down to NXT and let them continue what they were doing before. Exactly. Completely agree. I, I think you do have options before you. Again, call in NXT. If you have to call in Brock Lesnar, you could do a shocking turn, you know, for Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose, even though the way Ashton outlined Roman Reigns, I definitely prefer that. You can make this tournament special. To but, me, I mean, the like, finals of the tournament needs to be either babyface versus heel with the babyface winning or babyface versus babyface with one of them turning heel and also winning. Right. Right. I, I would go into the match with that. an established heel. The face needs to win. If you don't, then one of the faces needs to turn heel and whoever does the heel turn needs to win. 
I, I yeah, I would agree with that completely. Uh, you know, and I'm, I think they will go that route to be fair. I just don't know who's going to make up those roles that you define. Uh, you know, that's the question. And as you, well, I think it's earlier, safe to say that if it's face versus heel reigns is going to be the face in the situation. Yes. Yes. And, and if it's face versus face, I think that the most obvious route would be reigns versus Ambrose. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just pretty much completed the circle there because I think we've known and we've even started off of the assumption that Reigns is going to make up one half of the tournament final. Yeah. I just can't conceive and that's of anything the, else. That's almost a problem, too, because we kind of drew the same conclusion when it came to Money in the Bank, and they did a really creative job as far as not letting Reigns win that. I think they need to find a way to do that here. I just don't think they're going to. I think that at this point, with all the effort that, has been wasted on Rollins and Cena and Brock and Taker and Orton. They're just going to say, you know what, man, just throw our hands in the air and say, screw it. Let's just do the obvious because we aren't, you know, they're, they're too exhausted to try to be creative at this point, which is the ultimate paradox because their actual job is to be creative, but you get my point. Yeah. It's a shame too. Cause I, I know uh, I was actually looking forward to Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. And, you know, I do think Roman Reigns should turn heel at some point because I did enjoy the, the, the little bit of heel work I saw from him in NXT. And I think he could just run with a heel persona. Hell, maybe he does it at the expense of Seth Rollins. We've been talking a lot about the aftermath. Maybe Seth comes back, gets his rematch. And, you know, because he had to vacate the title, nobody ever beat him for it. And, you know, maybe Reigns turns that way because the authorities kind of soured on Seth because, again, he got injured. He showed he was weak. Authority hates weakness. They go with Roman Reigns who's been on a tear. I don't know. I, I think I'm fascinated both by this pay-per-view and how WWE is going to handle the aftermath because either it's going to be a comical tragedy and just a mess or they're going to find a way to swim. And I want to believe the latter because they have the talent to do it. The question is, do they have the competence? That remains to be seen. Yep. And with that, I think we've gotten about as much out as we're going to. I don't want us to start getting too repetitive here. Right. At the end of the day, this is going to be a massive challenge for the WWE's creative team, for the WWE's employees, for the WWE's workers. The, the wrestlers themselves are going to need to step up. I think this almost presents a bit of an opportunity to mid to undercard guys too, because this is... Seth Rollins is out. We're not going to get any Seth Rollins matches on any pay-per-views in the near future. John Cena is out. We're not going to get any awesome Cena U.S. Open challenges anytime in the near future. Bray Wyatt is probably going to be working The Undertaker, and you're not going to get any match of the year candidates out of that. If the mid to undercard guys put their asses out there and really freaking work their asses off, we might get some show stealers. We might get some match of the year candidates and we might get some underdogs that get a little bit more fan support leading to a push. And that's what I want. That last thing you said above all else, I think needs to happen. And, and here's the thing too. I agree with you that again, the guys need to put in the work, but the system needs to recognize that work and run with it. That that's my thing. Vince needs to get his head out of his ass and say, wow, Cesaro really is connecting. Or maybe Dolph has a really great matchup and he says, well, maybe, yeah, we can finally push this guy. You know, th that needs to occur. It needs to be a harmonious relationship here. Here's to hoping it happens at Survivor Series, because if it ever needed to happen, now is the time with all the injuries. So got my fingers crossed. Absolutely. All right, uh, and really, specifically, I, I'm curious, maybe we might end up getting a bit of a show stealer from Bree Ziggler. And, yeah, yeah, that would be really cool, and it would be a great opportunity, again, if, like, every match is a tournament matchup, already you've got Bree's in a high-stakes situation. If he beats Dolph, which I would expect him to do, you know, what a great moment for Bree's, you know? Not so, only that, but then that would possibly lead to Bree's versus maybe Ambrose. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, get, getting Breeze in the mix like that, I think, yeah. can only do good things. So, yeah. yeah. And if, 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 I mean, it is WWE. They don't like the idea or to perpetuate the idea that NXT talent is better than WWE talent. So they would probably have Ziggler go over in that first match, as dumb as we both think it is. And even then, if it leads to uh, Ziggler versus Wyatt, it would be interesting. Or Ziggler versus... Maybe another Ziggler Del Rio match. We've seen a lot of them, but they have all been good. So maybe that works. I don't know. I just think this this puts Monday Night Raw into a massive flux. And it, it really intrigues me to the point that 
as terrible as it is, it's almost a good thing because it makes me want to tune in on Monday just to see how the hell they handle this. Well, you know, you've got a really strong current now, like, pushing against you. Are you going to swim or are you going to let it sweep you away? That's the challenge here. And like you, I have that same grotesque intrigue. You know, it, it, it it's kind of morbid in a way, thinking, oh, wow, you know, you're actually finding a fascination in this. They but call that's... it morbid curiosity for a reason, brother. Exactly. And I, I've always said, like, I've... I've even said it, you know, when we discussed injuries in the past, because this certainly isn't our first rodeo in terms of topic, that injuries, no matter how pessimistic we want to be about them, and believe me, I got all my pessimism out of my system, we also have to look at it as an opportunity for a guy in the back to say, oh, great, that guy's pretty much mutilated his knee, this is my chance to shine. That's the kind of business we're in, you know? I love you know, John, that. Yeah. I just had a thought. Okay. What if they use this tournament... Because like you said, the whole thing is kind of built around 25 years of Undertaker, right? Yeah. What if the finals of this tournament ends up being Taker and Bray? Yeah, I think you did mention that in passing earlier. I wouldn't mind it. And then and then if Bray went over, Bray as WWE yeah. World Champion would be very interesting. And then even then, he could continue his feud with Taker, and we would have Bray Wyatt as champion versus a challenging Undertaker. That gives them a little bit more creative freedom to do what they want with Ambrose and Reigns and Wyatt or, and uh, uh, Del Rio and Owens and all those guys. But then you've got this crazy, like all of a sudden now Bray Wyatt has superpowers and he abducted the undertaker's brother. And there's a lot more of like a blood feud feel to that going forward. Now I'm not necessarily saying I want it to happen, but if they would go there, I think that there's a lot of potential for intriguing storylines to come out of it. Well, here's the thing, and you make an interesting point here, and I know I've said this point so many times before, so again, anybody who wants to punch me in the face, feel free. I but if, if, well, thank you. But if you're going to make Bray a threat, I think once again they've set the table. Whether or not they're going to take advantage again, I can't say, unfortunately. But you have him, uh, you know, beat down The Undertaker. They beat down Kane. They abducted both guys. He's got a huge Wyatt family now. You're talking Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, Braun Strowman, four guys in total in this family of Bray Wyatt leading the helm. He's got the powers of Undertaker and Kane. He looks legit. He doesn't have the wins to back that up, which still infuriates me, admittedly. But by appearance, he is one of the biggest threats right now with everything he has going. If you put the title on him, I think that could be an amazing heel run. Yeah. You have you have got these behemoths guarding him. He's got yep. supernatural powers himself. So even when you get through, I mean, imagine, yeah. you, you know, and that's like, the thing too, is that like, we talk about, Oh, well we, we need to put somebody with the title that can be with the authority. Who needs the authority when you've got Braun Strowman and Eric Rowan and Luke Harper as your bodyguards and magical lightning and fire powers. And you know, what's crazy too. Cause I, I know me and Gordon a few days ago, I think we were talking about, Bray. I was talking about Bray with somebody and I believe it was Gordon. And, and he said, you know, how do you even make, um, Bray as world champion, like work, like, like what would his motivation be? And I said, well, oddly enough, I think his motivation would be similar to Undertaker's motivations for wanting to be world champion. Cause I remember one promo taker cut where he said, now that I've got the world title, the souls are going to come to me. I no longer have to chase them. Yeah. And Bray could have a similar mindset. Like now all the people that I'm going to enlighten, that I'm going to make follow the buzzards. I don't have to pursue them anymore. They're going to come to me like, uh, like, like a bug, you know, to, to the light, you know, and just, I get them that way. So, yeah, I think you've got the motivation. You've got the credibility. If there was ever a time to really push Bray over the moon and make him the threat that he should have been eons ago, uh, it's now. You know, you do it now. So I wouldn't mind that at all, Ash. I completely agree. I, I Definitely the table set. Again, the question is, are they going to take advantage or not? Well, I, I think we've about talked this to death now. Um, I mean, the the good news is, John Cena is no longer the man with the most World Heavyweight Championship runs, John. Ah. He's been surpassed right? by Vacant. Oh, snap. That was good. Yeah, yeah. So congrats to Vacant. Uh, Cena still had to find a way to go over in the end. I guess his nose won the battle against Seth's knee. <laughs> there you go. So... Uh... With that, we're going to close this thing out. We wish Seth Rollins a quick and hopefully clean 
recovery. The worst thing that could possibly happen is them trying to rush him back from rehab. He um, needs, he need, and here's the thing. If he gets the full six to nine months or however long it is, if he gets the full time that he needs to rehab and recover that knee, he'll be back to doing Phoenix splashes this time next year. Yeah. 10 years ago, this was a career ending injury. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And while it is still serious in today's landscape, like he still can be Seth Rollins and he yeah. can still have an amazing career. Exactly. And I, I just want to tack on without, you know, exhausting this. I agree with you. Don't don't rush Seth Rollins. Give him this time. Yeah. He's one of the best prospects you have. Don't, don't pull, pull your. Sh- yeah, I was just going to say, don't pull any of your all. owe you one kid. Bullshit. Vince. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't pull that shit because you know I I love Seth and I know a lot of other people did too and we're all clamoring for that babyface run. Yep. It's one thing to clamor for get it. it. Exactly, it's one thing to clamor for it, but it's another thing to rush it and do it all wrong and botch the damn thing. Yeah, do it right. Do right by Seth because I'm I'm pissed and I'm probably gonna be pissed for the next little bit. But you guys have a chance to do something amazing here with him and you have a chance to really finally show us why you are the titan of the pro wrestling industry. Don't screw this up. You know, take this as the opportunity it is. So with that, I'm done. All right, guys, this has been a really long commentary. I kind of knew it would be going into it, but I feel like we got everything that we wanted to get off our chests laid out on the table. Man, this is such huge news, and I just felt like we had to say something. So that being said, we're still going to do our Tejano commentary it's just going to be later on tonight probably closer to tomorrow morning rather than tonight uh and with that being said though be on the lookout and man hopefully seth gets healthy as quickly as he can but as well as he can i don't want any kind of rush just just get well seth just get well and and same thing goes to guys like brian and sammy and hideo man these guys just need to and freaking orton too these guys, these guys I, I just want the WWE to just let them alone until they're actually ready to come back, right? Absolutely. All right, guys, with that, we'll see you all later.